Hey guys, TKC here the Kaiju Channel and welcome to another segment of Kaijudo News. So today is February 21st, 2013 and well, the Dragon Master Collection Kit is finally out. Here it is. Dragon Master Collection Kit. Woo, cool. So this came out on Tuesday officially. This is the official release date of this thing. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to be opening this up yet or even on video. Not really sure. Uh, I might participate in some sealed fun stuff with this, but... Not sure yet. I'm going to hang on to this, and I'll figure out what I'm going to be doing with it this weekend. Okay, but more importantly, we got two new preview cards. I'm going to talk about the first one that was previewed on the official Kaiju website, and that is Dreadclaw Dark Herald. So, I believe this is the second Terror Dragon we have seen, besides, of course, this lovely little fellow over here. And, well, it's a level 7, 7,000 power Terror Dragon. It has Double Breaker, and it has Knight of the Dragons. When this creature enters the battle zone, return all dragons from your discard pile to your hand. Okay. So, of course, Dragon Strike Infinite. Dragons galore. Dragons everywhere. And it seems that, you know, because of all the different civilization dragons, they all provide a different kind of aspect to your dragon deck. So, Darkness, of course, you know, they have a lot of different things they can do, like discarding or getting back stuff from your discard pile. Or, you know, just nifty things like that. And so they said, hey, why don't we make a dragon that pretty much, like, gets all your dragons from your discard pile to your hand. So, you know, you kind of, like, start fresh, uh, get all those dragons back that ended up in your discard pile after, you know, you kind of, like, swung in with them or they got terror pitted or whatever. You could go ahead and play this and get them all back and play them the next turn. And probably for cheaper because you'll be playing those firebirds that have uh, Dragon Song to, you know, decrease their level by one for each one you have on the field. So yeah, very interesting cards, a nice little, like, dragon reset, kind of, for dragon decks that use Darkness. Now, the next preview card was posted on Facebook, on the official Kaijudo Facebook, and I have to say, I'm definitely more interested in this one because, well, it is a Light Civilization card, I don't know. Light deserves some love, and so I think this card is doing it justice, and that is Lyra the Blazing Sun. So this is another Celestial Dragon. I think this is the fourth now? And they already posted it on their Twitter or something like that, but they confirmed that the Celestial Dragons are actually named after, like, things in space, like constellations and galaxies and all that kind of stuff. So I found that kind of neat. But anyways, this one is a level 6, 6,000 Dragon. It has Little Breaker, just like the last Dragon, and it has Solar Flare. When this creature enters the battle zone, tap target enemy creature. That creature doesn't untap at the start of your opponent's next turn. Yes! So this card is basically a more accessible Evil Fury Tatsurion that can't attack the turn it comes into play. And only has the breaker and has like way less power. But basically this is, you know, a much easier to get out Evil Fury Tatsurion plus tap which is awesome. So while Evil Fury Tatsurion kind of just like locked something into place to guarantee three shields to be broken, you know, this one actually taps it. So this is kind of like, not really a Starlight Strategist for dragons, but it's kind of just like, it has the same stats as Starlight Strategist, at least it has that, plus it has Dragon, which is quite a bonus considering there's so many Dragon support cards coming out in this set. You know, with cards like Lux or other Firebirds that you may be using, this could be put out on the field turn 4 or 5 or something. I just, I really like the whole ability of tapping and then making sure that that creature stays tapped, you know. So, like, if it's a big creature, you know, you could just tap that creature and say, nope, you're not doing anything until the end of my next turn. Um, so uh, that lockdown effect is just something that this game really needed. And so, you know, bringing this out right now in Dragon Strike Infernus, and it's not even been a year yet, it's just amazing. I really love where Wizards of the Coast is going with these awesome effects that just couldn't see the light of day in the English game of Duel Masters. So they're just doing a really good job with this game. I'm just, oh, I'm so pumped. This, this is just awesome. Now something else on the website that caught my eye and I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. I have to talk about it. And that would be the deck spotlight that Gavin posted this week. And it's Noah Kosal's 5 Civilization Recharge Control. Okay, whoa, okay. L let's try to figure out what's going on here. So first of all, 5 Civilization Control. 
that's something you don't see too often, but at the same time, you know, like, 5 Civ Control is actually not that bad if you could build it right. But not only that, but this is the first deck I have ever seen play Recharge. Recharge! Yes, Recharge! You know, typically, spending 4 mana just to put the top card of your deck into your shields is not the best thing in the world, because you could be doing so many other things on turn 4 that would give you an advantage. But in this deck, it just, it makes so much sense to actually use Recharge because I think he's using 31 Shield Blasts in this deck. What? The last time I saw that many Shield Blasts in a deck, it was my Duel Masters Bully Trigger deck that ran a bunch of them as well. I think it also ran about 32 or something, but it was a 40 card deck because it was meant to be like a combo deck. Uh, this one's more of like a stall out control deck, and this one's using 50 cards instead of just 40. And so this one is just a very, very grindy control deck. I highly suggest you go check out the list. I'm going to put the link in the description. Definitely go check it out. It's very interesting. There's just all these shield blasts that do a bunch of different things. You know, you got Spy Mission, Crystal Memory, and even, like, Search the Depths for, like, Draw and Search, kind of. And then you got, like, all the destruction in the world. You got Bone Blades. You got Terror Pit. You got Root Trap. You got Tendril Grass. You got Barrage. You got Tornado Flame. You got, you know, Bounce, you got Ice Blades, you got Veil Vortex, and you got Water Spout Gargoyle. Um, there's just there's so many things in this deck, it's just crazy. But the main thing you have to keep in mind here is that there's three Keeper of Dawns to get back any spell you want that's from your discard pile. And then combine that with Recharge, and combine that with Water Spout Gargoyle. You can essentially make a toolbox of whatever spell you want, like, really late game. So late game, you'll have a bunch of mana. Uh, I think the perfect mana you want to have in this deck is like 13 or something like that. And then you can just do a bunch of loops with Water Spout Gargoyle, Keeper of Dawn, Recharge, Veil Vortex. Uh, like just, ugh, there's so many things you could do. And it just it just grinds out the game really long, you know. You just you play Keeper of Dawn, get back Terror Pit, Terror Pit their creature, play Water Spout next turn, bounce back the Keeper of Dawn, play it again, get back Terror Pit, or get back any other spell you want, get back Recharge next turn, play Recharge, get another Shield Blast maybe because it's like two-thirds chance of that actually happening, and it just goes on there, it just goes on and on and on and on until you either deck them out or, you know, like they're completely locked out, they have like almost no cards in their hand, no creatures on the field, and you have like Keeper of Dawn, Heal of Flame, Water Spout, you just like, okay, I'm just gonna go for shields now, let's just go. I, I have like 50 cards in hand, and, well not 50, because then you'd lose the game, but you know what I mean, I'm exaggerating a bit, but you have a lot of cards in hand, a lot of creatures on the field, and you just like, have total control. Now, I don't know if this deck can actually possibly do that. It probably can, if your opponent is not doing too much on their field, but, you know, I mean, getting past Sunstock Seed and Keeper of Clouds is not the hardest thing to do, especially with all these crazy evolutions, you know, Hydra Medusa getting rid of them, uh, Emperor Neuron can't be blocked by them, uh, Sabretooth is big, you know, blockers are just gonna be banished to this big thing, so, I, I mean, I don't see this deck working against those kinds of, like, really aggressive decks, but I could be totally wrong, it does have all the Shield Blasts in the world, so, you know, anything could happen in this kind of deck. It's just, it, it's definitely very, very interesting. It looks like it's really well built. Like, the card amounts are very specific and for good reasons, you know? Like, you don't you don't want to play more than one Water Spout because you're just going to be putting in mana and you could be, like, searching it with Crystal Memory. Uh, you know, Search the Depths gives you that extra reach of cards you need because you have to look at top four. Uh, you know, one Dark Return just in case you're losing all your creatures and then, bam, you can get it back and start the loop again. Uh, Skull Shatter, of course, you know, to lock down their hand. You know, everything's really well thought out in this deck, and uh, I'm quite impressed. I don't know if it actually works, but just, like, looking at the construction of the deck, it's just really awesome. So that's pretty much it for Kaijudo News, but now I'm going to go ahead and talk about something else. I'm going to talk about my channel for a little bit. So, I'm looking for some feedback. I'm looking for some feedback from you guys, the fans. You know, because I'm getting quite a hefty amount of subscribers and I don't want to disappoint. So I've been trying out lots of different segments here and there. And, you know, some work, some don't work. I just want to kind of get an idea of things that you want to see on this channel, you know, because 
Of course, I could be putting whatever I want, which, you know, gives me the freedom or whatever, but if you guys don't enjoy it, then what's the point, right? So I'm asking you awesome people out there, what do you like on my channel or what do you wish I would do on my channel? Just give me some ideas, you know, something to work with and, you know, I can make you happy. I could do that if I can, you know, as long as it's within my limit, I can do it. Now, things that are not within my reach, as of now anyway, like, Tournament coverage and stuff like that. I would really love to do that. That's something I'd really love to do But unfortunately, there's just not enough people who play this game right now so, You know just for now who knows maybe it'll increase later I'm gonna be trying to you know promote the game, but you know, I've tried plenty of times Nothing has happened. So I've done like many different segments so far. I mean, I've tried deck doctor that was kind of fun, but I I felt like nobody was really enjoying it. I don't know. I just didn't really get the vibe of you guys enjoying that kind of segment uh, so I think I'm scrapping that for now unless you really want it back a lot of people are doing deck doctors too now like CVH that's kinda like his thing now I don't wanna like step on his toes so I mean news I mean I could definitely do news uh, that, that's what I've been doing it's probably the biggest thing I do on this channel is kinda just throw out news and give you my opinions and stuff like that it's pretty much my main thing uh, I want to look for some other kind of niche in Kaijudo that I could, you know, fill in that's lacking or just would be better to have or something like that would be awesome. Like analysis videos, I find those kind of fun too, you know, mathematical or not, whatever. I like doing those as well. Those are kind of fun. Uh, I don't want to confuse people. Uh, I don't want to confuse myself. Deck profiles, I could always do those. You know, I, I like making decks. It's probably one of my favorite things in Kaijudo is just making decks of any sort. I've been doing a lot of testing on stream. That's something else. I do have a twitch.tv stream where sometimes I just randomly ask people, hey, want to play some Kaijudo? And then I just test online either on the Octagon program or just on Skype with my deck right here and my camera up there on my TV. I don't know if you guys want more duels on this channel either. That's another thing. So overall, it just seems that like duels don't get viewed as much as my other content. And they don't get as many comments either, you know, like, I think the last time I posted a duel, it was like two comments on it. Yet, when you compare it to my news videos or anything else, it just goes up to 10 plus. So, people are a lot more engaged with these kinds of videos. So, that's pretty much my main question of this week or this episode or whatever I'm doing right now. Because I think Kaijo News is going to be more of like a whenever news pops up segment instead of a weekly thing. Because some people don't like it that I talk about news later than usual so it'd be better to be a bit more on point which is very difficult for me considering how busy I am with work and stuff like that so I kinda just get home see what happened and then I talk about it so I could be like half a day late oh no I'm just rambling now don't wanna make this video too long so I'm gonna go head out guys think about what you wanna see on this channel and I'll think about it myself so yeah guys this is TKC the Kaijudo channel Signing off. Enjoy your Dragon Master Collection kits. See you later, guys. Have a nice day.